So here's what I'm doing for the solar panel mounting system. And I've thought quite a bit about it. I'm gonna be mounting five panels to the roof. They're 320 watt panels. I'll be completely filling the roof, all uh, 14 feet by seven and a half feet with these panels. And so I wanted to do some kind of a frame. I did not want to have to drill into the roof. And then additionally, I wanted to be as lightweight as possible. I decided I'm gonna use just the traditional Z brackets um, and mount those into the hole like this. So each panel will have four Z brackets. And then I'm gonna use this uh, T channel. So the T channel will be attached to the roof with this, with this 3M uh, 5952 VHB tape. So this tape will attach to the flat side of this rail. And then on the opposite side of the rail, I have this channel. And so we have these channel nuts that basically slide in like that. And then those will, um, those will ultimately line up with the holes for the Z brackets. So it should be pretty simple, a uh, pretty lightweight. A lot of people use Unistrut, but this is a lot lighter weight and a lot less expensive than Unistrut. But I was hesitant to only use adhesive because I was worried it wouldn't be strong enough until I watched another YouTube video and a gentleman showed me how to break down the strength of this tape based on 3M's own data sheet. So if you look at the data sheet of this 3M 5952 VHB tape, the strength of this tape, this is a half inch wide uh, section of tape and the frame that I'm gonna be screwing onto is half, or that I'm gonna be applying it to is half an inch wide. So this tape, one square inch of this tape provides 81 pounds of, um, of adhesion, okay? And so these metal rails that I'm gonna attach are four feet long and half an inch wide. So that's four feet long, half an inch wide, that's 24 square inches of surface area. And then if you do 24 square inches times um, 81 pounds, I'm sorry, it's not 81, it's 85. So 85 pounds per inch times 24 per square inch times 24 square inches is over 2000 pounds of strength and of, of adhesion. And that's per rail. Each panel has two rails. So that's 4,000 pounds of adhesive force per solar panel with this method, which is gonna be absolutely more than enough strength for these panels to hold in place and never blow off. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is get four of these T-bolts and there's gonna, one of them's gonna end up in each of these holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and send in four of these. One, I already got one in there. Here's two, here's three, here's four, just like that. See how that works, bam. So here's a quick shot of the solar panels with the rack installed, just to get an idea of what that looks like. Out here. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is the, uh, the VHB tape is gonna get applied directly to this trim, or to this rail. I'm gonna stick it on and then push it down. The first thing I wanna do though is I wanna hit this with a sander just to kind of uh, rough it up a little bit and uh, hopefully get myself a little better adhesion. The next step is to wipe down the bar with 70% alcohol. 
So the next step will be to actually attach these, this uh, VHB tape. And so the procedure is you're supposed to just peel off one side, stick it to the metal, and then you're supposed to go over it with a roller and apply 15 pounds of pressure um, to the tape in a forward and back motion. And so I could have bought a roller at Home Depot for 15 bucks, uh, cause I don't have one. But instead, I'm going to use this piece of three quarter PVC pipe that I already had and a screwdriver. And I'm gonna just roll it just like that. So just a couple notes, you'll notice cardboard taped to the front of the panels. I went ahead and did that just to prevent the panels from generating electricity for the couple days it took me to complete the install while they were not hooked up to the charge controller. Additionally, what I'm doing here is just peeling the backing off the 3M tape. I have the panels already kind of measured where they go. So you basically just peel the 3M tape off, drop it straight down and then push it onto the roof. And I'll also mention I did sand the roof underneath where the panels will be attached. So I wanted to give you guys a little update on the solar panel rack. I've been driving around with it all installed for, uh, I don't know, probably about three weeks now. So I wanted to just give you guys a little close up on it. See how it looks. Now what I've done is I went back and I added um, a lap sealant. I added Dicor lap sealant to the edge of where the metal rail meets the aluminum on the roof. And so the idea with that is it prevents any kind of water um, from getting down and potentially eating away at the edge of that art. Uh, at the edge of that tape, that VHB tape. But as you can see, like if I if I pull on this panel, let me see if you guys can see this on camera. You should be able to see the, the bracket and the panel flex. Let's see. So like if I, if I put all my effort into this, you can see the panel flexing there on the side, see how it's going up and down. But if I look here, I don't know if you guys can see that on video because my hand's shaking. There we go. Now I've, I mean, that panel, that rail doesn't flex at all. Like I'm putting all my arm into trying to lift up this panel and it doesn't even budge. That adhesive doesn't even budge. So guys, I'm telling you, this stuff is definitely secure. You can see the final fitment. I got a nice... I mean, the cool thing is I'm using these uh, Z brackets, which are the, you know, they're designed for solar panels. So they hold the panel in place really well. And then I just have those, uh, those T, T bolts that lock in the channel. And then I have bolts on top and I did use a lock washer and I did use thread lock as well to lock these in place. And I also used thread lock on the bolt that goes up into the solar panel. But as you can see, everything's just really solid. So. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend the same procedure to anyone else that's wanting to add solar. This is an absolute secure solution. No drilling, very easy. Just stick it down and then seal the edges with Dicor and that's it. You're off to the races. And uh, on a further note, the panels have been functioning very nicely. I've been able to run my air conditioner uh, without any problems. Now you'll notice I have one solar panel missing. When I did the initial install, I installed five, one, two, three, four, five solar panels. And uh, I came into a little bit of problem, not an install problem, but an equipment related problem. So uh, stick around. I'm gonna just throw that information here at the end of the video, uh, just for folks that wanna learn a little bit about how you wire up a solar panel system and uh, learn what happened to me and uh, a, a uh, something that maybe you can avoid if you're installing uh, panels on your vehicle. So anyway, that's where we're at. Super happy overall with the design though. And so that's it for this video.
If you remember in my previous video, I had five panels on the roof. Now there's only four. So I'll tell you what happened. I wired everything up. Now the only way I could make the five panels run off of my charge controller based on specifications was to wire everything in parallel. And so that was gonna give me 10, 36 volts out and uh, 50 amps. And the charge controller that I have says the minimum uh, voltage input is 30 volts and the maximum amps is 60. So 3550 is right inside specification. Uh, but what ended up happening is I powered everything up, connected all the wires and the charge controller would read 36 volts, but it would read zero amps. And so it was not delivering current. And so I checked on my wire and everything was fine. I wasn't sure what was going on. So I emailed tech support of the charge controller and they told me, even though it says 30 volts is the minimum input, they felt 35 was too low. And so he told me I would need to step up my voltage. Now, the only way I can do that with five, a five panel system is I have to either add a panel or remove a panel. So I clearly have no room for six panels up here. So I had to remove a panel. So I'm down to five panels. I had to wire them in series parallel, which doubled my voltage. Um, to about 70 volts and then it doubled my amps from 10 amps to about 20 amps so i went ahead and rewired it hooked it up and everything works perfect so i'm a little bummed out i don't have 1600 watts of solar i only have 1200 watts instead um about 1250 but uh what i decided i'm going to do is i'm going to turn this space this is about five and a half feet by three and a half feet so i'm going to go ahead and turn this into a little rooftop deck so I figured let's go ahead and make the best of it. So now I'll, when I'm done, I'll have a nice deck and then I can sit on the roof and I can watch the sunset, watch the sunrise, drink some coffee and just kind of have a good time. So uh, I don't know, maybe the universe just wanted me to have a rooftop deck. Either way, we are going to make it happen. So that's the update on the solar, uh, but otherwise everything's charging and working well. Uh, the air conditioner is currently running. I'm 100% off grid. My shore power is disconnected. You can see right here, the mini split is running very silently. If we take a trip inside. You guys can't feel it, but it's a comfortable uh, 75 degrees in here. And uh, it's probably 90 degrees outside. So we'll look at the charge controller and you can see my, my battery is at 27 volts, 27.6 volts. My inverter's putting out 120 and we'll jump up to the power the solar panels and we can see right there i got 61 volts and 11.8 amps coming out of my solar array now the amps will vary based on the state of charge of the battery and since my battery is nearly full um, it's only putting out 11 amps but earlier in the day when the battery was lower i was actually getting uh i think i saw a height of a peak of like 26 amps actually that, that array was putting out so pretty impressive uh so far so good the main thing i want to figure out is uh can i run that air conditioner basically uh all the time and my cooktop and everything and not have to worry about plugging in to shore power so that's going to be the test and i'll keep you guys updated